The picture on the front of this box is of another world, a world in which the standards of possibility and order have been altered by sorcery and imagination. Whether or not you choose to dismiss this nether region as pure fantasy is your decision. We believe, however, that these scenes were painted from memory and constitute a vital record of the existence of a world outside our own. I'm in. Hey there, I'm Dan and this is Puzzle File. In 1990, Buffalo Games released a series of puzzles called the Mystic Series. This is a series of jigsaw puzzles featuring fantasy artwork by oil painter Ray McGinnis. I haven't been able to confirm how many of these there were, but there are five that I know of. I'm going to solve both of these two for this video. This one is called Express Yourself, and this one is called The Sentry. I got these two on eBay. This one is actually still sealed in the original wrap from 1990. Here's what the other three that I know of look like. So I was intrigued with the little gimmick on these that they're double-sided puzzles and it says that it features mystery artwork on the back. So I thought that sounded really fun. I'd get a couple of these solve them and then we could flip them over and see what the mystery image is. Then once I got them and I saw the back of the box, I discovered that there's actually not that much of a mystery. They give you a small black and white picture of the artwork that's on the back of the puzzle, so not very mysterious. And it's the same picture on all of the puzzles in this series. So I guess it'll be a mystery what the colors are going to be. It'll still be fun to flip it over and see it at the end. I'm going to start with Express Yourself because this one is already unwrapped. So on the front of the box, we've got the full puzzle image, Express Yourself by Ray McGinnis. On the back of the box, there's some information here about the artist, a little information about the Mystic series and about this puzzle. A world in which the standards of possibility and order have been altered by sorcery and imagination. It says on the back of the puzzle is the mysterious piece of artwork entitled Magical Mystery Tour. So this scene of castles and chasms is going to be on the back of our puzzle. On the side it gives us the finished size. It's 529 pieces. I love when they give you a really specific exact number like that. Okay, let's open her up. Oh, I love this. We've got the product warranty is still in the box. It says, if a defect of material or workmanship is discovered, Buffalo Games will replace the product without question or qualification. I wonder if this is still valid. It wouldn't cover this puzzle, but my other one is still sealed. And then here's the bag of double-sided puzzle pieces. Ooh, they feel nice and thick. This looks like it might be the original bag, too. These pieces look really cool. The colors are awesome. These are very thick and sturdy. They're a little different than Buffalo's pieces today. These are, I think, a little bit thicker and definitely a little more rigid. And of course, these ones are double-sided, so they've got a paper backing that has our second image on it. As is usually the case with double-sided puzzles, it's really easy to tell which side is the front and which side is the back, just based on the way that the pieces were cut. Oh, you know what? This is a current buffalo puzzle. Let's compare the pieces. This is the 1,500-piece Butterfly Spectrum. So the Butterfly Spectrum pieces are a little bit smaller, but that's to be expected because it's a 1,500-piece puzzle. They do seem to be a tiny bit thinner and a little softer. Like, it would be easier to bend the Butterfly Spectrum piece than the Express Yourself piece. 
And the different piece shapes are a little bit different. The butterfly spectrum pieces are maybe a little squarer. The Mystic series pieces are a little bit rounder. So let's talk about my plan of attack for this puzzle. The colors are kind of all over the place, so I think I'm just gonna turn everything face up, pull the edge pieces out and start there. Then I might move on to maybe this red section, looks like it's pretty identifiable, and then maybe start messing around with some of these greens. Okay, let's get started. Okay, it took about 16 minutes to get everything laid out. These are pretty pieces. As you can see, they're all the standard two by two piece shape, but I don't think that's gonna really be a problem because there's so much happening on these pieces, so much variety of color and texture. I think we'll be able to find our way. We do have tall ones and wide ones, which will be a clue as to which direction they go within the puzzle. So if I run into any trouble, I can start to sort them out by tall versus wide. But I don't think we're gonna have a problem with this. It's only about 500 pieces. So that just took about 20 minutes. Some things I'm noticing. One, there's a lot of glare. I use really bright lights in here when I'm filming, so shiny pieces kind of drive me nuts. Two, the pieces have a really loose fit, so you can't really pick up sections of pieces and move them around easily. I don't think that's gonna be a big problem overall, but just mentioning it. But three, I already love this artwork. These pieces are so interesting. You can see every brush stroke. You've got all these different colors colliding in really interesting ways, and it means that it's kind of unpredictable how the pieces are gonna go together. So far, it's been really surprising seeing the pieces come together. It's really fun. I don't think this is gonna take me too long, so I'm just gonna keep rolling with it. this puzzle. That, that took me just under three hours from start to finish. I did this all in one sitting last night because it was just so enjoyable. Sometimes artwork that's really painterly can be rough for puzzles. Like if you've ever tried to do a Claude Monet puzzle, it's tough. This puzzle had enough different distinct figures and shapes to help you get through it but then also had those expressive brush strokes that made it very uh, surprising and fresh. It wasn't easy because it's a complicated image. My brain had to stay engaged the whole time to keep working on it. But it also wasn't hard. The pieces just kept flowing the whole way through. And so many little details that I didn't see by looking at the box. This artwork reminds me of like fantasy novel book covers that I would stare at as a child. And there's so many different characters to meet and so many different stories to imagine within this image. I wish I could show you everything that's packed in here, but you kind of have to do the puzzle to get that experience. Love, love, love this puzzle. 
I'm not gonna flip it over yet since both puzzles have the same picture on the back. I'll wait until they're both done and we'll flip them both at the same time. So today I'm gonna be tackling the Sentry, which I think looks like it's gonna be a little harder. There's not as much color. There's not as many distinct textures. I'm hoping I can also get this one done in about three hours, but we'll see. All right, let's open up the box and see what we're working with. So this box is designed just the same as the other one. Mystery artwork on the back, two puzzles in one. And this one is called The Sentry. I love this picture. I don't know if the camera is picking up how detailed this image is. There's so much detail in this dragon, in the castle back here. This is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, we've got our... Oh, this one's a little bit different. Okay, this warranty has some more specifics. If within 90 days of purchase, a defect in material or workmanship is discovered. Okay. And on the other side, looks like it's sort of a comment card. So you can give them your feedback. I wonder if that's still their address. So here's the one from the other puzzle again, slightly different. And our pieces are bagged. And they look about the same as the last puzzle. Just a lot less color this time. Okay, this one's new, so there is a little puzzle dust here, but not a lot. It's not bad. So let's talk about strategy for this one. It looks like it's pretty dark all the way around the edges. So I'm probably gonna save the edge pieces for the end on this one. Obviously the thing that stands out the most is our Pegasus here. So I'll probably start with that. Then maybe try to get some work done on the dragon, work on the castle and work my way out to the edges. Okay, let's get started again. While doing the sorting, I noticed something very interesting about the piece cut. Maybe you've spotted it already. So this is not the same piece cut as on the last puzzle. Have you figured it out yet? All these pieces have the same exact shape. And I don't mean that they're all two by twos. I mean they are all completely identical and interchangeable. Look at this, I can literally pull any pieces out at random and start sticking them together. Check it out, we're gonna have this puzzle done in record time. So this is way beyond false fits. With false fits, the problem is you get a piece that seems like it's in the right place, but then once you get other pieces built in around it, you realize it didn't actually go there. These pieces are completely interchangeable, and with so little variety of color and texture across this image, I don't know if there's really a way for us to meaningfully ever say that we've done the puzzle correctly, except that this is a double-sided puzzle. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna work on this, get it put together as well as I possibly can. We'll flip it over and then by looking at the back image, we'll be able to rearrange things and get them in hopefully the right position. I'm not exactly sure what the back image is like either, but hopefully between the two sides, we can figure out where all these pieces are supposed to go. I mean, but what I do know is all these pieces are going to lock together in some formation, so we will have a completed puzzle at the end, even if it's not the right solution. I have never seen a puzzle like this before. This is so bizarre. I could see doing this as some kind of challenge gimmick, but it's not advertised on the box, and they didn't do it with all the puzzles in the series. What were you thinking, Buffalo Games 1990? 
All right, I'm gonna start on the Pegasus, which does have a really distinct image, so I should be able to get those pieces together. And we'll go from there. I've reached three hours of puzzling on this one and there are no pieces left with any kind of image on them. Let me show you what this looks like. We're looking good over here. These are the pieces I have left. Sorry, there is a lot of glare on these pieces. And so the big problem is it's not just a matter of, you know, I might have some pieces in the wrong place. The problem compounds because if this one's in the wrong place, then the next one I put in might be the one that goes to the left of that one, but not in this position. And then it just keeps going from there, wrong piece after wrong piece. I don't think there's any way I can really get these pieces together without making myself crazy. So what I'm gonna do is flip this over now, and I'm hoping that the image on the back side gives me a little bit more to work with. Okay, I need to carefully transfer it onto this piece of poster board. And this one is kind of crumbly, so I gotta go real easy. Okay. All right, I didn't hear anything move. Okay, we're gonna get our first look at what's on the other side of this puzzle. If it's all brown, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might just give up. Oh, okay. All right, no, we've got lots of color over here. This is totally doable. And it looks like just about everything that I had done up to this point is correct. Um, I think this piece is wrong. And I'm not sure about this one up here. There's a couple that I'm questioning, but by and large, that looks like a complete picture. So there we go. My final time on the century was a little under five hours. Not the three hours I was hoping for, but as you know, we ran into some complications. I guess let me be clear that I like a hard puzzle. So when I picked this one out, I knew that it was a difficult image. It's got very similar dark colors all across it. And so I thought it would be nice we'd have an easier one and a harder one. I wasn't counting on the piece cut, where every piece is exactly the same shape. That took it from being a hard puzzle to being a bad puzzle. There just wasn't enough information to go on to get the puzzle put together. It wasn't like I was struggling with it for hours and hours and finally gave up. After I had finished putting the picture together and just had all of the brown and black pieces to work with, I really didn't even get very far. It just quickly became clear that it was 
I think not possible to get this puzzle put together correctly. Because what was happening was I was getting next to no information from the image. All I had was just shades of brown or black. And I was getting literally no information from the piece cut. And once I flipped it over, this side had so much more going on in the image that it became doable again. Although, right at the end there, the last little group of pieces was this really dark section with some trees. And I spent a while trying pieces over and over again, and eventually I had to keep flipping the pieces back and forth, looking at both sides and using whatever little bit of information I had to get those pieces in. I think they might be in the right positions, but I'm not quite sure. We'll have a better idea when we flip it over again and look. So I was curious about why the sentry was cut like this and Express Yourself wasn't. So I was wondering if they had done a couple releases of this series. Maybe at one time they were all done with the identical pieces and then later they switched to more unique piece cuts. Or maybe there were different piece cuts for each one. So I went back to eBay, which is where I found these. And I looked through all the listings for Mystic Series puzzles, which there's actually a lot of them on there. If you're interested in these puzzles, they're not hard to find. On a lot of those listings, the puzzles are still in their original plastic wrap, so you can't get a look at the pieces. But I went through all the listings where you did have pictures of either the puzzle completed or a picture of the pieces. And I could not find another single puzzle that has the bad piece cut that I got with the Sentry. And in fact, I found other copies of the Sentry that don't have that piece cut. So every other puzzle that I saw listed on eBay where I could see what the pieces looked like, it had a more traditional piece cut with unique pieces. So if I do decide to get the other three puzzles in this series, I'm definitely gonna look for ones where I can see what the pieces look like ahead of time and make sure that they have unique piece cuts. So all in all, I'm gonna say Express Yourself was a really fun, just joyful puzzling experience. I loved it. I loved this art. It was really fun to put together. The Sentry was it, was, it was nice, the parts of it that I could do. It wasn't as fun, it wasn't as interesting to me as this one. Just a little more drab, I like a lot of bright color. Once I flipped it over and started working the image on the back, which is called Magical Mystery Tour, I started having a ton of fun again. That's a really nice image as well to do as a puzzle. At some point I'll probably redo this one using that side. And now of course we gotta flip these puzzles. We already know what's gonna be on the back of Express Yourself, but I'm gonna flip it anyway, we'll take a look. And then we'll flip over the Sentry so we can see that image complete and see if we have all the pieces in the right place, more or less. Okay, here we go. I've got Express Yourself laid out on some cardboard. Now I have to be pretty careful with flipping this one because it has a really loose piece cut. Look at how you can just pull these apart. So this is gonna wanna crumble apart. There we go. There we go, yeah, so that looks like it's exactly the same as the other one. There we go, yeah, they're exactly the same except for the piece cut. Okay, next we're gonna flip this one, which is not as loose a fit, but still a little loose. All right. And there it is, finally complete, The Sentry by Ray McGinnis. This really is a beautiful picture. And it probably would have been a neat puzzle to finish if the pieces had been different. Now I'm gonna take a close look and see if I think all the pieces are in the right position. I think that they are. This is the section that was giving me a lot of trouble on the other side at the end. But it looks to me like it might be correct. I mean, how would you know? You'll never know for sure. That's the thing. You know, this artwork is so fantastic. This would have been a completely perfect, wonderful puzzling experience. It's such a shame about the piece cut issue. It makes me kind of wish that there was a way for me to give my feedback to Buffalo Games of 1990. Oh, wait a minute. They gave us a comment card. This is Buffalo Games' current address to this day, by the way. Dear Buffalo Games, I recently completed two puzzles from your Mystic series, The Sentry and Express Yourself. The puzzles were in very good condition for being 33 years old. 
I enjoyed the art by Ray McGinnis immensely, but was disappointed by the piece cut for the century. All the pieces were identical and interchangeable. Should you ever decide to re-release this series, I hope you will take my feedback to heart and design a cut with unique piece shapes. Still a Buffalo fan, Dan, at Puzzle File. I'm going to drop this in the mail today. I will definitely give you an update if I hear back. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. I'm going to get back to puzzling. See you all next time.